Okay, on Canvas, open up Tips for Creating an Effective PowerPoint Presentation. This is a PowerPoint that's going to give you all those little tips that you need to do to correct your PowerPoints about me and about social studies as well. You can open it and go back and read it at any time. Whenever you're presenting, the most important thing is to know your materials. Your slides are an outline, a guide for you to help you stay on track and on point without you turning around and reading the slides. You can glance at them whenever you need to to get yourself back on track or if you lose your place you can always pause turn around look and then turn back to your audience don't keep your back to your audience as you read the slides they can read the slides on their own you need to present additional information to what's on the slide don't say um uh like you know when you present and don't apologize if you make a mistake just correct yourself i meant to say whatever it was you meant to say as opposed to I'm sorry I didn't mean that I meant just say I meant to say or not X but Y whenever you're presenting you've got to look at your audience how is your audience stressed what do they look like what do they need to know what do they want to know keep your eyes on your audience whenever you're looking at your audience think about who are you really presenting to? For example, with the All About Me PowerPoint, you will be presenting to your class and to your teacher. So you need to dress nicely, say a button down or a polo shirt, type shirt, and nice jeans, no holes in your jeans or anything for boys. And for girls, you know, nice jeans, nice top, nice pants, a little dress, sundress type thing, but not super dressy because that's not your audience. More dressy, casual. Eyes, you don't necessarily have to look your audience in the eyes, but you at least need to glance out at them, look around the room, that kind of thing. You also want to make sure that you speak very clearly, not super loud necessarily, but not really soft. Some people are naturally soft-spoken or naturally loud, so you may either need to increase your natural volume or decrease it depending on you and your personality. Now, when you're speaking, remember you're speaking to the back of the room, not to the front of the room or the person next to you, but you're speaking to the entire room, particularly to the back, since you'll be in the front presenting. When you present, you also need to make sure you say welcome in some way, such as good morning, good afternoon, anything like that that invites your audience into your presentation because you want to engage your audience, make them be a part of your presentation. You also need to state why you are giving this presentation. You don't want to just go, I'm going to be telling you all about me. You might want to say something like, this is a presentation that's going to tell you a little bit more information about me so that you can understand where I come from. Not just reading the title of your PowerPoint. You might want to try and connect to someone in a, someone, in a similar way. Connect to your audience. What do you have in common with them? When you're giving your PowerPoint about the benefits of the military, you might want to give information or ask if the audience has any family members that are in the military. Why are you giving this presentation about the military and the benefits of being in the military or being a part of the military? Remember always to use your appropriate transitions and animations. We've talked about this. Your length of transitions doesn't need to be more than a second. Your animations don't need to be more than about half a second. You also want to always remember that the information is the most important part of your PowerPoint. Not the pictures, not the graphics, not even the animations, but the information. If something takes away from the information, you don't need to use it. Thank your audience and then ask them for questions and sometimes your teacher may not want you to ask for questions so make sure you ask the teacher if that's okay before you ask for questions okay your design I've told y'all to set up your design theme and don't make any changes right now but at some point if you have a lot of time you may need to change some information on your slides such as the font particularly the size there are some font designs where your titles and your text may not have a font size that's big enough to be presented on a projector screen. 
you don't want to have your title shouldn't be over 60 and your subtitles shouldn't be over 40. Your title font size should always be larger than any of the font in the rest of the text in the subtitle area or your bullet points. Make sure that it's okay to have a font that is different on your title and your subtitles. However, you want to keep a similar style to your font. Mostly, you want to continually use an easy font to read. You don't want to constantly have like a lot of changes. It distracts the audience rather than helps them to continue with you, which is the whole purpose of your presentation, is to give them a visual aid for you as you present. You can use different colors, not for these PowerPoints. We don't have time for you to change those kind of things, but adding different styles, bolds and italicized and underlined, can help to have more impact for your presentation. You don't want to really use a script or an italicized font very often because that can be difficult to read for some people. So you want to keep in mind that everybody has doesn't have as easy a time reading script type fonts. And you'd also don't want to use all caps except for in your titles. Keep that in mind because remember all caps means yelling. You also want to have your bullet points not be more than six to eight words. Remember that 7-7 seven, seven rule. For bullet points, you need to have no more than seven bullet points per slide and no more than seven words per bullet. Now, there might be a slight exception, hence the six to eight words per line. However, as close to seven as it can possibly be, if I can change the wording on it, I'm not going, I'm going to count against you if you don't have those seven words. When you have your font color, now your design themes are set up automatically to do this. You want to use a light text on that dark background. This is really important. Any type of graphic, whether you're doing Photoshop and doing a magazine cover or whether you're doing PowerPoint, you want to have light text, dark backgrounds. Some people find the dark backgrounds difficult to read. I don't. I like the dark backgrounds with the really light text, but that's me. Use dark text on a light background. Notice how my background here in this PowerPoint is a light purple and my font is a black. So make sure you have dark text if you have a light background and light text if you have a dark background. The big thing about your background is, and that's why we're using design themes, is you've got to keep your background consistent and subtle. You don't want it to be the focus. Sometimes a design theme can have such so many graphics on it that it becomes more about the design than it does about the information, but you want your design to just add to, to keep it clean, uncluttered, simple, not too much. You want to leave empty space around your text and around your pictures. You don't want to have 20 pictures on a slide because it makes all of the pictures lose their effectiveness. It's more important to have good information. You also don't want to use more than three transitions in your entire PowerPoint is better to just use one because it lets the audience have clear expectations and they know what's coming when they see that slide move from one to the next. They know that this is going to be a new slide with more information. Your graphics should have good quality clip art. You should use it just a few, one or two, maybe three at the most tops, but most of the time one is plenty. You want to use the same style of graphic throughout your presentation. So if you use cartoons or clip art, you want to continually use that throughout your PowerPoint. If you use photographs, then you want to continually use the photographs. Whenever you can, if you can get to see your PowerPoint on a projector before you give your presentation, you want to make sure that it looks good on the screen because you might need to increase or decrease the size based on how it looks on the board when you present it. You know, we may or may not have time to do that before you give your presentations. Hopefully we will, but if not, make sure you're looking at it from that perspective because it needs to be able to be seen clearly from a distance as well as up close. Remember, no distorted images. Make sure you don't use any copyrighted prote protected pictures. You never want to use, ever, more than three colors on one slide. We've got light purple, darker purple, and a black font. That's good enough. We don't need any more, any more, and it's too much. 
Make sure that when you're using colors, you're choosing carefully. We've talked about the color wheel and how opposite colors look better together. Sometimes the super bright graphics and super bright colors can be distracting rather than adding to. Anything you add to your PowerPoint needs to add to the presentation. Review this information if you need to. At any time, you have access to the PowerPoint on Canvas. It's under Effective Tips for Creating Effective PowerPoints, and you can look at it at any time that you need to.